All right, guys, Economic Ninja here. I got a story, it's breaking right now. Well, not exactly, but it's off the hedge. Uh, and I'm going to link it in the description below. Again, guys, uh, I'm not a bot. I'm not trying to get your money and get you to WhatsApp. It's a bot, don't believe it. For those that have uh, been unsubscribed recently, uh, if you don't mind hitting the subscribe button again, I don't know why, but it looks like a ton of people fell off. And, uh, and if you don't mind hitting the bell icon and the thumbs up, that'd be awesome. Um, all right, here we go. So uh, the supply chain uh, is already very damaged. It's very fragile right now. I've been reporting about this for the last couple of weeks. Uh, I do believe we're gonna see harder times ahead and what just happened uh, today in the news is pretty gnarly. So uh, uh, Kododo News, uh, Koidoyo News, Kodoyo? I am very bad with uh, pronouncing or saying uh, Japanese words, so I apologize. Um, there was a, a ship's captain, 66 year old, uh, was among the missing of a ship that was a Japanese ship that was uh, moving, it was a massive container ship moving auto parts, only auto parts. Uh, it's a uh, roll on roll off vessel. It sank off the coast of Japan Friday morning. Uh, this ship, a large ship, struck another ship, uh, sank, some crew members um, have been found. The ship's captain is still among uh, the missing. It's one of those 557 foot long ships. And uh, the one thing that we do not know is it says it was carrying auto parts uh, and we don't know what kind of auto parts. Now, uh, it says Denso is the largest automotive parts manufacturer in Japan and specializes in electronic systems and powertrain control modules, all right? now. I want to explain something. So first off, this ship was fully loaded, it said. It's a massive ship. We already have a very serious supply shortage when it comes to chipsets uh, for uh, display modules in vehicles. We've already seen that the Ford companies, actually, as a matter of fact, almost every single car manufacturer on earth has been affected by this chipset shortage. And now we have a different type of shortage. And the reason why I can say that is it's one thing to say you have a chipset set shortage because a uh, factory burnt down in Japan and then the same chipset uh, type of manufacturer in Texas was affected by this deep fr uh, freezing that happened back in, uh, I believe, February. But anytime a one ship sinks that's full of a product, there may be more product back at its home port but now you have to deal with the amount of time lag that it takes to load up that, uh, that ship and get it to its destination. So you have that time lag. And we've seen, it sounds funny, but I'll use the toilet paper analogy. We see what happens when you have that time lag is you have a panic set in uh, because people just think, oh, if it's, it was here today and it was here yesterday, but now it's gone, and tomorrow it's not gonna be there. We sort of panic and, and, and try and grab things. Well, these, car companies are grabbing at things right now because they're going, hey, I will pay more for those chips, just get them to me because I don't care if they used to be 10 bucks or 100 bucks, I'll pay $1,000 for those chips because I have 99% of the vehicle done, it's sitting in a field right now and I can't sell it. And so what I believe we're gonna start seeing in the next few weeks, uh, especially in auto, the auto industry, is prices start to really spike. I. Um, told the story about a new car a couple of a uh, few weeks ago and I was talking to the dealers because I you know I was shopping around looking at multiple dealers and they said yeah you're at a, a perfect time uh, spot right here because and I heard this from multiple people in multiple cities okay so I, I tend to believe them uh, because it was just conversation they said we've just been told that we're uh, gonna be raising our new car costs right away because there's no more cars coming in and, and it's true every dealer I'd been to uh, had very very low inventory and uh, we could see that we were gonna go buy a used car it sounds crazy but a used car with thir uh, sorry, was 24,000 miles on it and it was two years old was only $3,000 cheaper than buying a brand new car with more features. Now it just blew my mind, you know, but, but we have quite a crisis going on right now. And so multiple uh, dealers had said, yeah, we're planning on, we've been told we are gonna be upping the prices 10% because when there's no cars, hey, this is the price. And uh, honestly, most people don't even care because they don't care about the, the cost of the car, they care about the monthly payment and 10% doesn't really equate to that much more per month. So when it, when you're dealing with a payment. 
So I think that we're gonna start to see this more and more. Um, we, we have all these uh, fire points, these are um, triggering sort of mechanisms going off right now in the oil industry, in the auto industry. Um, we're gonna start probably seeing a lot of it uh, really rising the, the emotional tension pretty soon in the food industry when you they start quoting the drought you know we know we're in a drought right but we're not at the hottest point of summer where these crops can completely fail because of the heat because we don't have enough water to water them so we're going to start to see that emotional tension rise too so with that being said you go well what can i do you know the whole point is preparedness. You know, when, when you see trouble coming ahead and someone shows you, hey, there's trouble ahead, then you you move to avoid it. You you posture yourself, you position yourself to, um, to have more than you did yesterday, okay? So what would that mean? Well, if you think there's gonna be food shortages, you go get a little extra food right now. That's what you do. Allow the, uh, the just-in-time delivery system, which our country lives on now, to heal itself. The problem is most people don't prepare ahead, and I'm not talking about hoarding or going and buying a year's worth of food, but I mean, if you don't have 60 days extra food, you know, just some canned goods, then, I mean, who are you helping? And the facts are is that when all of a sudden everybody rushes the store, it's empty within hours, and then you're out. And then it starts to cause a panic. And that's when you see lines waiting for the delivery trucks. And then, you know, those lines get too long, and then you'll, you'll see delivery trucks attacked. You're going to see that. You know, we've, we've, I've studied these uh, currency crisis uh, situations before where uh, countries get themselves way into too much debt, their currency starts to collapse. It's happening all around the world and the dollar is not immune from it. So think ahead right now. You have this amazing gift right now to just prepare a little. You know, don't, if you see trouble ahead, you don't, if you can't afford a new car, don't buy a new car. Deal with what you have. If you, uh, you have a cell phone that works, don't go get the latest cell phone. That, I mean, that's, that's honestly the truth. I see people right now, they're lining up. They don't got a dime to their name, but they got the fanciest new phone. Blows my mind. So anyway, with that being said, I, I hope you guys got something from that. Um, the Economic Ninja is out.